Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. In this video I'm gonna do the tutorial for the GWNQ1000 only the sensor functions and the record screen. If you want to see the basic uh, G-Shock functions check out my other video where I covered those. And also just like in all my other tutorial videos since they're very long in the description you will find a table of content with time codes so you can jump to specific parts of the video or functions of the watch. Okay, so the first function that we're going to cover is the barometer. Now to enter the sensor functions, you press this button right here. And it's going to go back to the function that was last used of all these four sensor functions or five. Five. <laughs> okay, so pressing it. Now it's going to take us to the barometer. Once you get into the barometer, it's going to read the pressure every five seconds for the first three minutes. And then it's going to switch to reading the pressure every two minutes for the next hour. After that, the watch is going to return back to the home uh, uh, to the home screen. However, even if you're not in the barometer, even if you're in the home screen, the watch keeps on measuring the barometer barometric pressure uh, in one of two intervals, depending on what you select in the barometer. So it can uh, it can it can either measure uh, every 30 minutes or every two hours. And while in the home screen, by pressing this button you can display the barometric data and now depending on the interval you selected in the barometer each one of these dots left and right can represent either 30 minutes or two hours also one more thing that's connected to the barometer but that you can do in the home screen is you can activate the weather alarm so pressing and holding this button right here in the home screen is going to activate the weather alarm where this is now going to become the default screen this little hand is going to show you the tendency of the of the pressure and also the watch is going to measure the barometric pressure every two minutes for the next 24 hours no matter what you do with the watch this is pretty good because based on the look of this graph and also the fact that the watch is going to warn you of a sudden pressure change whether it's going up or down you can actually predict storms coming your way so it's a pretty cool function but please note that while the weather alarm is on the automatic time reception and the power save function are both going to be turned off now you can wait for 24 hours for this to turn off or you can turn it off manually by pressing and holding this button like so now let's go back to the barometer as you can see in the barometer, this seconds hand is going to show you what the difference is between the two last measurements. And it can go from 0 to minus 10 or from 0 to plus 10 hectopascal. Also, if you don't want to view this, if you want to see the seconds, you can simply press this button and the seconds hand is going to show the current seconds. And the screen here is going to show you what the pressure is in number and this graph is going to be the same one that we saw in the in the home screen which is going to show you the tendency of the of the pressure and this is the most useful part of that okay so the interval that i mentioned is done in the calibration of the barometer now to calibrate the barometer you pull the crown out and now if you think that the barometer is showing incorrect data you can use a very precise barometer to uh, set up this as a reference however I've never seen a watch that malfunctions in that way, so I never touch it. Now to go to the interval setting, while in this uh, calibration mode, you press the mode button and it's going to ask you whether you want the 2 hour interval or 30 minute interval. Whichever one you select to complete the setup, you simply close the crown. And that's pretty much it. The last thing that you can do in the barometer is create a timestamp and you can do it for any of these sensors. So if you want to remember that on uh, May 20th at uh, 940 you had the pressure of 1010 hectopascal, you simply press and hold this button for a couple of seconds and the watch is going to store this data in the record screen that we're going to get to later. Well, this is pretty much it when it comes to barometer. The next function is the compass. So you press this again and the watch is going to jump to the compass. In the compass, the watch is going to take readings all the time for 60 seconds, after which it's going to return back to the home screen automatically. And to restart it, once it jumps back to the home screen, you simply press this button again because as you can see, it always goes back to where you were. It doesn't go back to the first sensor function, but to the one that you were in when the watch returns back to the home screen. 
Now, in the, this compass, unlike other compasses on older G-Shocks, uh, actually works when you put the watch vertically, which is impressive because when I did the GA1000 video, and I had to put the camera and the watch like this because as soon as I would tilt it to my face, the compass would go berserk. But this one, just like the new Frogman, actually works no matter how you turn the watch because it has an additional sensor where it compensates for, for any motion of the watch. So it's pretty good. Now in the compass, you can also do a timestamp of the bearing. So if you have the watch pointed at a certain direction and you want to remember that at a certain time of a certain date you are going in that direction, you go in the compass and you simply press and hold this for a couple of seconds. And again, the watch is going to record that bearing in memory that's going to be visible in the rec screen. The last thing that you can do in the compass is the calibration and there are two types of calibration. To calibrate the compass you pull the crown out and the first option of calibration is the figure 8 calibration which is something I will not do right now because it involves you strapping the watch on your wrist, pressing this button and shaking your wrist in a figure 8 at a pretty wide angle. So it's impossible for me to do it here, but I'll probably put a picture of how it's uh, how it should look. There is a second type of calibration and you go with the mode button and this is the three point calibration. Now to do so, you have to point the watch in one direction, but it has to be level. So let's just move the camera slightly. Okay, so let's say that this is level. Now when you put a level, you press this lower button and the watch is going to be doing its calibration. Once it completes this direction successfully, it's going to tell you OK and to turn it 180 degrees. We'll just wait for a second. OK, turn 180, so now you have to turn it 180 and you have to press this button again. Now again you have to wait and if it completes if, if it completes it successfully now, it's going to tell you turn over the watch because, like I said, it's a three-point calibration, meaning that it has to do it upside down, upside down as well. Now, turn over, we turn over, and then we press this button again. Since now it's impossible for us to see if the calibration is successful, they came up with a brilliant idea of giving you a single beep if it was successful and double beep, beep if it wasn't. So now you have to listen there it was a single beep meaning everything is okay and you just completed the calibration of the compass you push the crown in and that's it now the third thing and final thing that you can do with this compass and let's go back with the camera is you can account for magnetic declination. In other words, if you're using a map that uses, and the magnetic declination is different in degrees between true north, north and magnetic north. So if you're using a map that has a magnetic declination written on it, you have to put it into this watch to have as accurate reading as possible. To do so, you again go into the calibration mode, and by pressing the mode button, you skip the figure eight, the three point calibration, and you come to the declination. And now using the crown, you can go due east or due west in one degree increments. And now you just put the degrees that are written on the map to make this as accurate as possible. Once you've done that, you close the crown and that's pretty much it. The next function is the altimeter. So let's press this button again. And once the watch goes into the altimeter mode, it's going to take readings every second for the first three minutes. And then after that, it's going to switch to one of two intervals. It's either going to take a five second measurements for the next hour or two minute uh, measurements for the next 12 hours. And this is also something that you select in the calibration mode. And since this altimeter is not, is actually calculating the altitude based on the, on the, barometric pressure, you will have to calibrate it as often as possible because any change in weather and pressure is going to affect the altitude displayed here even if you're not moving. So the best thing to, to, the best way to use this altimeter is to calibrate the reference altitude every time when you're about to do a hike. So to calibrate it, you pull the crown out and now you set up the altitude to whatever altitude you, you have as a known. So let's say if you're using a map and you know that you're at a current altitude, you just put that altitude here. The next thing that you can do, and once you've calibrated like this, you simply close the crown. However, since we're in the calibration, pressing the mode button, 
is going to ask you for the interval. And this is the one that I, I spoke of. So now it's at two minute intervals for 12 hours. If I turn the crown, I can switch it to five second intervals, uh, five second interval for the next hour. So whichever one you select, that one is going to be used. However, that's not all. You see, this watch can show you a difference between your reference because you can put a relative and absolute uh, altitude and the relative altitude between where you started and when you're where you're going is going to be displayed with the seconds in so it can be displayed in five minute five meter increments or 50 meter increments to select which one you're going to use you press the mode button again and it's going to ask you whether you want to use hundreds of meters or thousands of meters and the way you do is use it is you use it by using this scale right here so if we put it to hundreds of meters and we close it, now when I press this button right here, the watch is going to show you the difference between the last two measurements. So it's going to track your progress in climbing or declining by going to plus 10 or minus 10. And since we selected hundreds, this is going to be 50 meters and this is going to be 100 meters. If we selected thousands of meters, this would be 500 meters and this would be a thousand meter. So it can track your climb up to 1000 meters. Now to uh, toggle between this and the seconds hand showing seconds, you press this upper button. Now also to set a uh, reference altitude. So let's say you're climbing and you stop at a certain point and you want to measure your climb from that point on, you simply press and hold this button and it's going to put this current altitude as your reference altitude from which this little hand is going to show you whether you're going up or down. And that's pretty much it. And like I said, calibrate the altimeter as often as possible, otherwise it's not going to be accurate. Now, the last thing that you can do while in the altimeter, just like in all other modes, is create a timestamp. So you want to remember that at this date, at this time, you were at this altitude. You just press and hold this button and it's going to record it and put it into the rec screen. And that's pretty much it. The next function that we're going to show you is the temperature. Now, this watch is going to read the temperature and display it here. So it's as simple as possible. However, if you want to get an accurate reading of this, you have to take off your watch for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Otherwise, the heat from your wrist is going to get transferred to this. So it's not going to be accurate. Well, one more thing that you can do is you can calibrate it. So you can pull the crown out and calibrate it to a very uh, to a known accurate thermometer if you have it. However, this just like the pressure sensor, I've never seen anyone having problems with it. So it's something I really do not touch. And that's pretty much it. And also one more thing that you can do here, just like in all other sensors is create a timestamp. So pressing and holding is going to record the current time date and the temperature that you measured. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the temperature sensor. The last function that we're going to show you is the depth sensor. So the depth meter on this, once you go into the depth meter, is gonna work automatically. What does that mean? It can measure your, your uh, current depth and your dive time. And as you can see, the seconds hand just switched here. So now the seconds hand is gonna show you graphically depth up to 50 meters. And it's also gonna show you here in a digital format, the depth up to 50 meters. However, uh, if you wanna see your dive time, you simply toggle with this button between the dive time and the, uh, the depth display. Since this is already showing you graphically, you can keep it like this. So you can tra keep track of your dive time and depth in real time. And this thing is going to activate automatically once you dive deeper than one meter. So once you go into the depth sensor, you can just leave it like this. And as soon as you jump into the sea and go below one meter, it's going to automatically start the dive time and it's going to start the depth measurement. And also as you're surfacing out, once you go shallower than one meter, it's going to stop the dive time and it's going to stop the depth measurement. Also, this is auto once it stops the measurement, it's automatically going to store the maximum depth and the dive time into the rec screen where you did all those manual manual uh, records. So this one will do it automatically. But if you want to do a manual record at a certain depth, you can do so by again pressing and holding this and it's going to store that uh, time dates and that current depth that you were in. So a pretty cool feature.
Since the dive time can be maximum of 59 minutes, after that the watch will automatically stop and return back to the home screen. And that's pretty much it. Pressing the sensor button again goes back to the barometer and pressing the mode goes back to the home time. And the last function that we're going to cover in this tutorial is the rec screen. So from the home screen, pressing the mode button is going to take you to the recall screen. And over here, the watch just saved all the timestamps that we did. So as you can see, the first one that's spinning is the time dates and the measurement of the pressure. Now you can go with this button to the next one. The next one was the, the compass or the bearing that we stored at 33 degrees at 943 and so on. So the third one was the altitude record, as you, if you remember. The fourth one was the temperature, and it tells you the year, the time, the, the date, the time, and the temperature. And the last one was the depth, which was zero meters, as you can see. Now, like I said, this watch can store up to 40 entries like this. And if you come to the 41st, so if you have one more, it's simply gonna delete the oldest entry and rename them all again from 1 to 40. So you don't have to delete these entries because they're going to automatically start deleting the oldest one as you as you progress. However, if you do want to delete a certain entry, you select the entry, let's say entry number 3, and press this for a couple of seconds. It's going to write clear and there. The entry number 3 has been cleared and now they have all moved accordingly. If you want to clear all the entries and completely wipe out the memory of the watch, you press and hold this for five seconds. So you press and you still keep it pressed and there. Now we cleared the whole memory of the watch. There is nothing stored inside. And that's pretty, that pretty much completes the rec screen. Pressing and holding will take you back to the home screen. Well, this pretty much completes the whole tutorial of the sensor functions. And like I said, if you want to check out the regular functions, check out my other video. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.